less than 100 days into his presidency, Ronald Reagan was shot. He was coming out of a hotel after giving a speech and a crazy man came up and fired six shots. He hit Reagan, he hit several other people around him. Reagan was thrown into a limousine and they took off. And at first in all the excitement and the adrenaline rush, Reagan didn't even know that he was shot. Um, but pretty soon in the car ride, he realized that he had been shot in the chest. The bullet had just missed his heart and it lodged into his lung, collapsing it. The limousine did a crazy spin and drove to the George Washington Hospital where they rushed him in for an emergency surgery. Uh, even though he was in incredible pain, Reagan still kept his lighthearted, uh, joking attitude. When the doctors cut his suit off of him, he complained about um, how they were ruining his nice suit. And before he went under anesthesia for the surgery, he looked around the room and, and said, well, doctors, I hope you're all Republicans. And one of the surgeons replied, Mr. President, today we're all Republicans. In his recovery, um, lots of people wanted to see him, some for political reasons, others just because they cared about him. But Nancy Reagan, his wife, was very adamant that no one should see her husband. She was very terrified that he had almost died and she wanted him to have a quick and, and silent recovery. She didn't want a lot of excitement and political handshaking and that kind of stuff. But one of the guys who did make it through the Secret Service and Nancy Reagan's uh, guard of the president was Tip O'Neill. Now Tip O'Neill was the Speaker of the House and he was a Democrat. Now Tip and Ronald Reagan argued all the time. They fought like cats and dogs on Capitol Hill. They both had very different views of how America should respond to certain things and what they should do with America. But the crazy thing is, uh, and, and there was one of the guys who witnessed this, um, Tip O'Neill went into the room and uh, he knelt down beside Ronald Reagan's hospital bed. He took his hands in his hands and he cried. He prayed with Reagan, prayed for a speedy recovery. And the, the White House staffer who witnessed this said he even heard him quoting Psalms 23 to Ronald Reagan. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. He said Tip O'Neill leaned over and kissed the president on the cheek and said some quiet remarks about how he hoped he would get better soon. Now, I, I just can't imagine that happening today. If our president uh, was shot, would the Speaker of the House, a Democrat, come to his hospital bed and pray over him and quote scripture over him and kiss him on the cheek and say that he loved him? You know, it seems like today, our society has become so divided that you can't disagree with someone without hating them. Now it's like, well, if you disagree with me, maybe you vote a different way or, or you believe a different thing or you think something different about gender or, or sexuality or, or religion or abortion, then we are bitter enemies. And that's just bad for America. You see, Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan had very different philosophies, but they had the same goal. They wanted America to be strong. They wanted the Americans to be prosperous. They wanted good things for America. And when we meet someone that we disagree with, we need to try to figure out, okay, what is something that we both want? Churches are, are divided over dumb things like music and, and colors of carpets and, and, and small things that shouldn't divide us when we need to realize, hey, we're Christians. We want the same thing. We want people out there to learn about Jesus' love. Politicians who say the same pledge to the American flag, who, who want America to be a great nation, should be able to work past their differences and find compromises. You know, Jesus said the, the best way to, 
defeat your enemy is to pray for them, to love them, to try to do what's best for them. America has a small minority of people who are trying to destroy our unity and make us hate each other. And we need to stop listening to that loud minority who's filled with bitterness and hatred and lies. And we need to start to talk to our enemies, to the people who disagree with us, to the people who we think are wrong. We need to find out what's in their heart. What do they want? What do they need? How can we help them? I just finished reading a great book and it talks about the difference of viewing people as objects and viewing them as people. When we stop seeing people as an object, like a Democrat or Republican, or a sinner, or an idiot who disagrees with me, and we see them as a person who has hopes and desires and fears and needs, then we can listen to them. And by listening to them, we're not gonna become brainwashed and completely agree with everything that they say. But when we listen to them, we can hear their heart. See, at the end of the world, there's gonna be two types of people. There's gonna be people who are filled with hatred and wanna control their enemies. And there's gonna be people who are filled with love and they wanna give freedom to their enemies. We now, are making small decisions that will affect which group we're in. And so today, when something bad happens to one of your enemies or to someone who disagrees with you, think about Tip O'Neill, Ronald Reagan in that hospital room. Maybe you need to reach out. Maybe you need to share Psalms 23 or say a prayer or give a word of encouragement. God made you to do good things on this earth. God made you to be a light. And that's not just to the people that you like and who agree with you. That's to the people who disagree with you, the people who hate you. Jesus said, love your enemies, and that'll make this world a better place. God bless you.